Hello and welcome to this video on factorising into two brackets. Now in the previous video we saw that factorising could be thought of as the opposite of expanding. Now if we had two brackets like this, we have seen previously how to expand those two brackets. So what we do is we do each thing in this bracket multiplied by each thing in this bracket. So we could do the x times the x for example, and that gave us x squared. We could also do the x times the 4. We're choosing one thing from here, one thing from here. So x times 4 is 4x. Now we've done the x times each of these things, and now we do the 3 times each of these things. So we could do 3 times x, which is 3x, and we could do 3 times 4, which is 12. Now if I collect like terms, we can collect the 4x and 3x together to give 7x. We get this. Now let's suppose that someone had just given us this expression and they asked us to work out what the original two brackets were. That's known as factorising, to go back from this to this. Now how would we do it? Now are there any clues? Well we saw that 12 there we obtained by doing the 3 times the 4. So this number here was the 3 times the 4, these two numbers here. Whereas this 7 here we obtained because we had 3 plus 4. That was 3 plus 4. So if we were trying to do this backwards, we were trying to factorise this to get back to here, we need to find two numbers which add to give the 7 and multiply to give the 12. So we need two numbers that add to give this number and multiply to give this number. And if we've done that, then we know what these two brackets are. Now let's do some examples. I've got x squared plus 6x plus 8. Now we need to think of two numbers which add to give the number in front of the x. I'm going to put a little plus and a circle there just as a visual aid. And we need to find two numbers that, the same two numbers which multiply to give 8. Now I find it helpful to think of the numbers which multiply to give 8 first. Now what multiplies to give 8? Well we've got 8 and 1, 8 times 1. However, 8 plus 1, they don't add to give 6, do they? We've also got 4 times 2. 4 times 2 is 8. Do they add to give 6? Well, yes, they do. It's 4 and 2, isn't it? So what we can then do is we have two brackets, x is the first term, and those two numbers were 4 and 2. It doesn't matter what order they go in. We could have them the other way around. And that is the factorisation. Let's do some more. We've got x squared plus 2x minus 15. And again... We need to think of two numbers which add to give positive 2 and times to give, make sure you observe the sign on the front, they've got a times to give minus 15. So you've got to think of two numbers that multiply to give minus 15. So think of numbers that times to give 15 first. Well, uh, it could be 15 and 1, but they don't add or subtract in any way to get 2. What about 3 and 5? 3 times 5 is 15, but we know it's got to multiply to give a negative number. So one of them's got to be positive and one of them's got to be negative. If you have two numbers that multiply to give a negative number, one has to be positive and one has to be negative. So we've got 5 and 3, one of them has to be negative. Could it be 5 plus minus 3? Well, yes, it could. That gives you 2, doesn't it? So it's going to be x plus 5 and x minus 3. If we did it the other way around and we thought it was minus 5, times 3, minus 5 and 3, well they don't add to give 2, do they? Because minus 5 plus 3 is minus 2, not plus 2, so that would be wrong. Let's do another one. We've got m squared minus 6m minus 7. Don't be upset by the fact we've used m instead of x, it just means at the start of each bracket we're going to have m instead of x, that's all. So we need two numbers that again, add to give minus 6, and multiply to give minus 7. So again, if they multiply to give a negative number, one of them has to be positive and one of them has to be negative. What numbers multiply to give 7? Well, conveniently, 7 is a prime number, so the only numbers that multiply to give 7 are 7 and 1. But we know one of them has to be negative, so which one? Is it going to be minus 7 and 1 or minus 1 and 7? Which pair of numbers adds to give minus 6? Well, it's minus 7 plus 1 would give minus 6. So it's minus 7 and plus 1 because they add to give minus 6 and they multiply to give minus 7. Let's do a fourth one. We've got y squared minus 9y plus 14. 
and we need two numbers which multiply to give minus 9 and multiply to give 14. Now notice they multiply to give positive 14. Now you might think they could both be positive, but the problem is if you add two positive numbers, they wouldn't give a negative number. So it must be that they're both negative numbers, because we know negative times negative also gives a positive number. So what could they be? Let's fill in the y first, because we've got y here instead of x. Well, 14 is 7 times 2, isn't it? And we said they both have to be negative. So is minus 7 plus minus 2, do they add to give minus 9? Well, yes, they do. So it's going to be minus 7 and minus 2. And we've got the factorisation. Now, let's do these test your understanding questions. We've got first x squared plus 13x plus 36. We need to factorise that. We've also got y squared minus 10y plus 25. So you may wish to stop the video now to have a go at these. Now hopefully you've had a chance to have a go at these. We just need two numbers which add to give 13 and times to give 36. It's going to be both be positive. So what numbers multiply to give 36? Well, it could be 12 and 3. But do 12 and 3 add to give 13? Well, no, they don't. What about 6 and 6? They times give 36, but 6 plus 6 is not 13. But we're closer. Uh, what about 9 and 4? 9 times 4 is 36. Is 9 plus 4 13? Yes, it is. So the two numbers are 9 and 4, and we've got the correct factorisation. What about this one? We need two numbers which add to give minus 10 and multiply to give positive 25. Now they multiply to give a positive number, so either both the numbers are positive, which is not going to work because they won't add to give a negative number, or they're both negative. So what numbers multiply to give 25? Well, 5 and 5 do. If we made them both negative, well, minus 5, and if we added that to minus 5, that does make minus 10, so that is the correct factorization. So make sure you use y instead of x, because we've got y squared there. And it's going to be minus 5, and minus 5. And you might be able to spot that we could write that as y minus 5 squared because both the brackets are the same. Now, if you want to challenge, I've got these two killer questions here. We've got x to the 4 plus 6x cubed plus 9x squared, and we've got x to the 4 plus 3x squared plus 2. And just to give you a clue, maybe we can find a common term that we can factorise out first before we factorise in the way that we've seen here. So why don't you have a go at that if you're up for the challenge? Now let's do these. We've got x to the 4 plus 6x cubed plus 9x squared. Now, they all have a common factor of x squared. So we can factorise out the x squared, and then we're going to have a bracket after. And then x squared times what gives you x to the 4? Well, it's x squared. x squared times x squared is x to the 4. x squared times what is 6x cubed? Well, it's 6x and x squared times what is 9x squared? Well, it's 9. And then we can factorise this thing, because this is not fully factorised yet, because we can still factorise this. So we need to find two numbers that add to give 6 and times to give 9. Well, that's 3 and 3, isn't it? So it's going to be x, x plus 3, and then x plus 3 again, so we can put a squared on this. And then finally, we've got x to the 4 plus 3x squared plus 2. Now, if we initially try to factorise it in the normal way, we might think of two numbers which add to give 3 times give 2. Well, they're 2 and 1, aren't they? 2 and 1 add to give 3, they times to give 2. So we can put the 2 and 1 here. But we don't want to put x and x here, because if we were to expand this, that doesn't multiply together to give x to 4. It only gives you x squared. But if you put x squared here instead, then x squared times x squared does give you x to the 4. Then we're also going to have an expansion. We've got the 1x squared plus the 2x squared, and that does indeed give you 3x squared. And we've got the 2 times the 1, which is 2. So that is the valid factorisation. But you wouldn't find a question that difficult in the GCSE.